So um, welcome everybody to, uh, to our Tuesday seminar. Um, oh, well, today we have uh, Anna Gierskiewicz and uh, she's, uh, she uh, will talk to us about periodic orbits in the Rustler system, but she uh, got her PhD in 2011 in, from Krakow with uh, Claudius Wojcik. And uh, after that, uh, in mainly in uh, uh, yeah, topological methods. And then later on, she started combining these with uh, computer assisted uh, uh, techniques. And uh, recently she has proven, for example, that, uh, uh, that uh, the rotations of Hyperion, uh, the moon of uh, Saturn, that, uh, that uh, those uh, uh, dynamics is chaotic. But uh, today she will talk to us about a, a different problem, but uh, still uh, a problem with many, many different uh, periodic orbits. So Anna, I'm, um, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes, I am going to, to talk about the joint work with uh, Piotr Zgliczyński. Um, we were, um, uh, we wanted to study um, the, <laughs> say immortal Rossler system, but not with classical parameters this time, but with parameters which assure us to um, uh, the uh, attracting periodic orbits uh, appear. Okay, so, uh, so let me maybe recollect the Rossler system. As we probably well known is a well known example of a um, low dimensional system with a uh, with some chaotic behavior. The classical parameters, uh, as I said, are um, uh, a equal to 5.7 and b equal to 0.2, but we will change uh, a later. Um, what more to say about the system? Uh, symbolic dynamics was proved already. And of course, this um, this kind of picture must appear uh, whenever one says about Rossler system. It's a more or less well known uh, Rossler attractor. I will need it only to 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 set some um, arrangements. So, as I said, I will always use uh, b equal to 0.2 and vary a uh, for us. Uh, Mm, for us, the, the Poincaré section is fixed always um, to half plane x equal to zero, y uh, smaller than zero. Of course, the Poincaré map is uh, not uh, defined on the whole section, but in our area of interest, it is. Well, um, as we know very well, um, the intersection of um, the attractor with such a section is uh, as we can notice, almost say one dimensional, okay, <laughs> which was the clue observation for us. Um, another, another thing that I want to fix is whenever I will say, of course, about the end per periodic orbit for the system, I will mean a, a periodic orbit which passes through an end periodic point for Poincare map. And I will mostly mean the, bay, uh, the fundamental period equal to n, if I don't add anything else. Okay, so um, as I said, we were interested in two cases, uh, a equal to 5.25 when uh, we expect a three periodic um, attracting orbit for the system and later, uh, oh, sorry, later also uh, a equal to, uh, to 4.7 when we expect a five periodic orbit. Okay, let us um, do some um, heuresis, which is also our motivation. Uh, when, we, um, when we observe this three periodic orbit for, uh, uh, for uh, the parameter A equal to 5.25, we were wondering what is happening, well, maybe inside this, this small region. What can we expect there? Uh, well, mostly we can observe that um, there is a strong contraction in Z direction, okay? So probably we can expect something 
uh, some inter um, some um, invariant set which should be almost one dimensional with a, a three periodic orbit which um, which we can sketch more or less okay now suppose for a moment that we have some hypothetical one dimensional manifold um, which I will call uh, calligraphic M and suppose that um, the Poincaré map is indeed uh, a two-dimensional uh, small perturbation of a one-dimensional map, which I will call modal map, and and uh, denoted by calligraphic P. Okay. So I will not be interested, in fact, if uh, such a map exists, but I will ask what if it exists and what if this P is indeed a two-dimensional small perturbation of such a map. The question is, could we apply Tsiolkovsky theorem there? We know very well that Tsiolkovsky theorem um, is related to a one-dimensional situation. If we have, uh, say, a three-periodic orbit, okay, three-period oh, doesn't work very well. If we have a three-periodic orbit on a one-dimensional uh, self-map. Uh, then we have to have uh, also all period, all natural periods that uh, appear uh, that follow it in a Tsiolkovsky ordering. So in fact, all natural pe periods. So our question was, um, if P, if the Poincaré map P is so close to a one-dimensional uh, map with a three-periodic orbit, uh, do some periods which would uh, follow from Tsiolkovsky theorem, uh, do some periods survive or something like that? Of course, uh, natural, um, natural um, uh, way of study would be probably to uh, study some, uh, some proofs of Tsiolkovsky theorem. <laughs> There's a, quite a number uh, up to date of them and uh, try to generalize some notions which appear there and try to try to uh, note whether some of them have any chance to survive in two dimensions because uh, as we know very well Tsiolkovsky theorem is not in general true in, in two or higher dimensions but but our p our map uh, Poincaré map is not any uh, two-dimensional map it is very close to a uh, one-dimensional so maybe some methods would survive. Okay, so um, our study is based uh, uh, on the idea which was already introduced by Zglitinsky, and it was inspired by the, some proof um, originally by Stefan and, uh, and also developed by Bloch and, uh, and the others. Basic idea is that uh, mm, uh, Stefan and Bloch also used a notion which was called covering between the one dimensional intervals. Covering sounds so familiar to us, but in a slightly other sense that we tried to, uh, to check whether, um, to check how, how close they are related uh, to each other. Unfortunately, covering uh, between intervals um, are also uh, covering between intervals is also possible when the edges of of the covering interval are is mapped to the uh, are mapped to edges of the covered interval so it has no chance to survive with small perturbations but hopefully maybe we can find some uh, some sets which are two dimensional which will um which will fulfill some cover, some two-dimensional covering relations in our sense. That was our idea. Yes. Additionally, um, uh, the uh, the horizontal we call it horizontal covering relations in two dimensions are easy to check to, with computer assistance, uh, as we know very well. So we have managed to um, to obtain some uh, interesting results there. So we have proved the existence of all natural periods for the case uh, A equal to 5.25 with three periodic orbit, as Tchaikovsky theorem says. And we also uh, proved the existence of 
almost all natural periods, except three. Uh, exactly how uh, it would be expected from Tsiolkovsky theorem. Uh, we have used different methods, mostly covering relations, as I said, and also interval Newton method for the cases uh, n equal to two, n equal to four, and also we used interval Newton method to uh, prove non-existence of, uh, of any three periodic orbits in the area of uh, the invariant set. So these are our results. So maybe I will uh, tell you shortly how we did it, okay? Uh, the two-dimensional H sets is a notion that we, um, that we use quite often and in many different, um, many different contexts. This context is very simple. So we used a simplified uh, definition, just two-dimensional. In, in this uh, simple context, uh, the H set is just an, a rectangle with distinguished uh, vertical edges and horizontal edges. Okay, we call the left edge L of N and the right edge R of N. We also distinguish the horizontal boundary and the left side and the right side. So the left side, maybe I'll show you some picture. That will be better. Okay, so as expected, the, the left side is just everything that, which is to the left of the H set and the right side, everything that, that lies to the right. So, so H set is basically a rectangle with some additional structure, simple structure. And uh, maybe uh, what do we mean by covering? Or maybe I'll show you both of them. The original uh, one dimensional covering by uh, which I, I, I have taken from Block and, uh, and, and others is as following. We have two intervals and one of them covers the other if there exists a sub interval, which is mapped exactly on the covered interval. So as I said, it is possible that um, just the edges go to the edges. So, so it's uh, absolutely um, fragile if, uh, if you perturb that. Our two-dimensional horizontal covering is um, a stronger notion in the sense that we, we, um, we demand that covering have some margins. So we want um, a two-dimensional H set cover, uh, if it covers another one, then um, first of all, the image must lie, um, maybe the, the, the picture which is on the, the next slide would be better. Maybe I'll show you the picture. Okay. So we demand that the whole image lies uh, um, everywhere except above and, and below. Okay. And it doesn't touch the horizontal edges. And additionally, we want the left side to be mapped to the left and the right side mapped to the right or opposite. Opposite is also, is also good. Okay, so this is our covering and what is important, um, it should be quite, um, quite stable, um, quite, um, I would say, persistent if you perturb the system, as you see. Of course, uh, the important thing is that uh, such covering relations um, um, imply existence of a fixed point. Okay, this is quite an old, uh, quite an old theorem. Um, if we have a cover, a, a self covering, then a fixed point must exist somewhere, somewhere in 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 the middle. And if we are talking about the Poincaré map, then of course we have a periodic uh, a periodic orbit for the system. There is also a variation of this theorem when we have a chain of covering relations, when uh, one set covers another and the second one covers the third one, and, and finally they go back to N0. Then we have a, a periodic orbit that, uh, um, that goes exactly as the pattern says. So it jumps, uh, so it jumps to N1, N2, N3, N4, and come back to N0. And of course, for the Poincaré map, 
as previously, we also get um, periodic orbit. So, so this is uh, this is a tool to uh, to prove the existence of periodic orbits. It is, as I said, extremely easy to to check by interval arithmetic. If we have a tool that uh, that helps us to enclose the images of um, of the H sets also in H sets or just rectangles, then then we can just enclose them and enclose also and close also the edges, the images of the edges, and then actually um, checking the, um, the horizontal covering relations is just a series of, uh, easy, um, of easy conditions that um, mostly rely on checking on some uh, less or greater relations. So, so it's, it's, it's very easy to check with interval arithmetic. Of course, if we have a tool that um, that helps us to enclose the images and um, such a tool, of course, now there's time for advertisement. Okay, so such a tool is um, is provided, for instance, um, by um, by the CAPG library. Um, there um, uh, there is a possibility to to calculate the overestimated images of Poincaré maps and enclose them. In, uh, in rectangles. Of course, uh, if the image is too large, we have to sometimes adjust some, um, some affine coordinate systems or divide the images into, into grids of smaller boxes. But, uh, but basically the tool uh, relies on, on that observation. Okay, if we have such a tool, then what do we do? Uh, let us fix for a moment um, the, the first set of parameters, which is A equal to 525. Uh, As we know, this system has a three periodic orbit. Then we have a theorem which says that this, uh, this system has n periodic orbits for any natural n. How we do that? Of course, uh, first of all, we have to prove that there exists uh, as a three periodic orbit, which is relatively easy by interval Newton method. And then uh, let us follow our heuresis. Um, as I said, we have assumed that there exists a one dimensional manifold uh, for, e for which the, the Poincaré map is a perturbation of, of self of map of it. Okay, we, we can parameterize such M hypothetical M by Y coordinate and try to make uh, numerically a plot how would look like the um, how would look like uh, the plot of the model map uh, P. It can be done numerically. And as we can see, um, uh, there are some interesting relations, but one dimensional relations between its segments. I have called um, the segment between P1 and P1 and P2 by I0, and this is I1. And then we can um, observe that um, if such M exists, of course, then we have a one dimensional relation uh, in which I0 covers I1, as you can see. Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, so I zero covers I one, and additionally, I one covers both I one and I zero. Okay, so uh, with this uh, with these relations, uh, one could produce in Tarkovsky theorems uh, infinitely many all all natural periods, and we try to do the similar thing uh, for two dimensional map. So we want to find a similar two-dimensional H sets lying probably somewhere there, which fulfill the similar cover, uh, horizontal two-dimensional covering relations. Okay, and it could, uh, it could be done indeed. Um, my, my H sets look like that in an affine coordinate system. So as you can see, they like quite close L0 to I0, 
this was I zero, right? Or I zero. Okay. And this was uh, I one. So L zero is slightly longer here and shorter here than I zero. And L one is shorter than I one. And indeed, uh, uh, these are their, uh, their uh, numerical parameters. So we have some affine coordinate system C. And these, these are the straight H sets, which lie, let's say, in the base of our L0 and L1. And in fact, we are looking for, uh, uh, we are proving the, um, the, um, the horizontal covering relations between N0 and N1 instead of L0 and L1. Okay. Uh, if we uh, if we um, if we plot some uh, numerical um, numerical images of L0 and L1, they give us some chance. But as 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 you can see, the the margin is not not very very big here. But but it but it is indeed. Okay, so with uh, computer assistance, we prove indeed that uh, N0 covers N1 and uh, which covers itself and then covers N0 through um, the map, which I called PC, which is in, uh, in fact uh, our Poincare map, but in uh, the straight coordinate system. And if we have such a chain of covering relations, we obtain the periodic orbits um, just like that. For n, uh, n equal to one, we get a stationary point just simply from the self-covering. And if we take n greater or equal to two, we have to make a, a longer chain, but we just have to, we just have to uh, stay in n one for n minus two times and we get the desired um, uh, desired uh, chain, which proves um, which proves the n periodic orbit. It's of length. So this is how it was done. In fact, uh, in uh, in case of three periodic orbit, no, uh, yes, observe that uh, indeed uh, such a chain, such a chain uh, produces uh, the the n periodic orbit with fundamental period n, it cannot be anything anything less. And of course, at the end we observe that uh, that uh, n periodic orbits for P C produces also the n periodic orbits for P. So we get what we wanted, what we expected from Sharkovsky theorem. What was done um, similarly or not similarly for the case of five periodic uh, attracting orbit. Uh, so the case in the case of uh, a equal to four point seven, we prove, of course, the existence of a five periodic orbit, attracting orbit. And additionally, we have to enclose. Uh, maybe I'll go back for a moment. We have to enclose this area of the five periodic orbit in some set because we will be proving uh, not only the existence of n periodic orbits but also the non existence of free periodic orbits so we have to we have to say uh, exactly where we are uh, where we are um, disproving the existence of uh, of this free periodic orbit okay so our set i called it a is just a parallelogram it contains, in particular, the five periodic orbit. We had to um, we had to prove uh, that it's uh, um, forward forward invariant, but it can be do quite easily by interval arithmetic. We just divide it in small pieces and check whether all the images come in uh, go into into the um, the set A. And we if we have our field, it, uh, this is depicted here. Then we do similar thing as previously. So we plot numerically the expected plot of the model map, and we um, and we study 
the one dimensional covering relations between them. Okay, so I can go back for a little bit. Okay, so now it's much more complicated than previously. You can observe that I0 covers both I3 and I2, okay? Uh, I2 covers itself, which is important, okay? It is depicted here, okay? It covers itself. And, uh, um, and uh, also I1 and I1 covers I3, which also covers I0. The essential part maybe is the loop which goes here with this ad additional loop here. Why is it important? Because it produces almost all periods. If we, for instance, want to obtain, I don't know, a five periodic orbit, we have to jump to I2 and once more to I2 and then to I1, I3 and I0, we, we got a five periodic orbit of 10. We have to stay in I2 for a suitable amount of time. Uh, as we can see, we can produce uh, with this method all periods greater or equal than five. Additionally, we obtain a period two with this loop, right? And period four, if we just go go simply um, go simply uh, through four of them okay we cannot obtain uh, a period three which is which is nothing nothing strange according to Sharkovsky theorem so we will be interested in finding the h sets probably close to i0 and i2 i will call them of course n0 and n n2 which have a similar uh, chain of uh, covering relations, but two dimensional. And of course it could be done. It was a bit like a um, hide and seek game, but we did it, okay. They look like that. As you can see, they are slightly longer than, than I0 and I, uh, I2, <coughs> but they uh, lie in the nearby. And of course, we, we also set them in some affine coordinate system. These are their parameters. And we can check uh, numerically that indeed uh, the expected covering relations occur. And of course, we check that rigorously by computer assistance of CEPT. If we have a demanded chain of uh, covering relations, then we also obtain almost all periodic orbits. As I said, the, um, the stationary point uh, from the self-covering N2 to N2, right? And um, all periods greater or equal than five uh, are produced similarly as previously. We have to stay in N2 for, uh, for um, a suitable long time, okay? And uh, additionally, we should find also a two and four periodic orbit to, um, uh, to prove the TRM. We could do that also by covering relations, but, um, but we had to, uh, do, to find additional ones. Um, but in fact, it can be uh, done easier just by interval Newton method, by hand, let's say. Um, <clears throat> we can... Uh, we can use the covering relations uh, to um, just to simplify the things and to uh, to find a place uh, where we can expect such uh, periodic orbits. Um, uh, the best place were, uh, for the two periodic orbit was I zero. In fact, we could also look for it in I I three. And the best place to look for a four periodic orbit was I1. Actually, it can, it can be anywhere, of course, but in, uh, in I1, uh, there was a greater, uh, the greatest chance that we do not find uh, any stationary point or, or two periodic orbit, which would be also, which would also appear as a four periodic, but, uh, but these, uh, these uh, two, um, these two periodic points are surely 
fundamental period two of, and fundamental period four. Okay, the last thing that we wanted to do is uh, to prove non-existence of a three periodic point in the set A, and it can be quite easily done also by interval Newton method. We just divide, uh, we divide the whole set A into small boxes. And for each box, we calculate uh, the third, uh, the image through the third iterate of, um, of Poincaré map and check whether it, uh, uh, it has a non-empty intersection with uh, the small box. If it has a, an empty intersection, we can of, of course um, go further and we gather all, uh, all such small boxes that has a non-empty non -empty intersection with itself. And these are the only sets that can contain any three periodic points. We call it S and it's depicted on the picture here, right? It's quite small. And then we apply the, the, the interval Newton method to S, also divided, but, but, but it's not important, uh, for the third iterate of P. And we obtain the unique uh, stationary point for P, uh, P3, which can be still a stationary point also for the first iterate of P. And next, we also um, apply the interval Newton method for the first iteration, and we also get the unique uh, stationary point. So it must be the very same for point. And we get a proof that um, there are no, uh, no three periodic orbits with fundamental period P, uh, period three. So this is basically, oh, this is basically what, uh, what we have done there. Oh, I see that I was going so quickly <laughs> that I almost finished. I'm, I'm really sorry for that. <laughs> um, another question um, that we are working on is, uh, was that just luck or uh, that we could find such eight sets close to this, this uh, intervals, covering intervals that, that have the similar behavior, but in uh, two dimensions or not? And we are pretty sure that that, that it wasn't just luck and that we can prove some uh, interesting facts in general for attracting and even also for repelling orbits that such behavior is, um, let's say, quite common. Okay, so, so that's it actually. <laughs> Maybe I'll, uh, uh, I have, um, I have run too quickly. I'm, I'm sorry for that, but we have a plenty of time for, for questions, maybe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> exactly. We have plenty of time for our questions. Uh, thank you, Anna. So who would like to ask a, a question? Um, may I have a question? Of course. Yes. Um, and I have a technical question. If you could uh, show us these sets uh, L0 and L1 for the first case. Okay. I go back because this, this program is nice for, for, uh, for the first case. This is it? Oh, no. The L0. Yes, yes, this, this is okay. Uh, it's okay. No, the, the other one. Okay, right. Yes, this one. Uh, so my question is, uh, um, why, why didn't you glue these two sets? If you, if you extend it L0 so it touches L1, then uh, perhaps uh, it would be easier, easier to, to check the covering relations. Am I right? Mm. Because you, you can, you can uh, increase uh, uh, L0. Yes, so I understand it, the gluing, yes. But, uh, yes, but, okay. but uh, then, then it is, easier uh, for L0 to cover both of them because it is larger and there is no problem with covering uh, both of them by um, L1. Am I right? Are you right? Well, I'm thinking if, uh, if the theorem is still through, true if uh, uh, they intersect at the boundary, right? 
Well, it, it is perhaps oh. true. It's yes, true. it is, right? No? Yeah, it's true. Yeah. It's true. Yes, it is. Yeah. And so, yes, yes. Basically, sets will have non empty intersection, but no periodic points is on the boundary, in fact. Right. So, they can have common edge, right? So I, I would suggest that if you if you want to consider more complex cases, then you you can use this uh, idea. Okay. Because it it is really easier. Because once you increase L zero, then then perhaps um, the image of L zero is larger, and then you can s uh, slightly increase uh, L one if you if you want. So uh, there are some options then. So but this yes, is probably. Idea. But but I must admit yeah. that not that that point was the problem. The problem was uh, on the on the extra, um, ex uh, on the other edges, right? Yes, but 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 probably it it it, it would okay. It would, it Thank would you. Easier also. Thanks. Right. I also have one question. Sure, go ahead. ahead. Yeah. So uh, maybe a bit naive. So. Um, of, of course, you can oh. find when, when you have a one periodic orbit, then of course you can produce n periodic orbit by just repeating this one periodic orbit. And so, this trivial extension you want to exclude, of course, when you say there is, exists an n periodic orbit. So, by which argument can you conclude that this n, when you say there is an n periodic orbit, is minimal in some sense? Uh, well, it. Yes, 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 yes. It, it's uh, it's a very a very important question because um, uh, that's why we are looking for for two sets because we uh, we want uh, exactly this situation. Uh, maybe I'll skip to the next slide. Okay, if we want an uh, n periodic uh, but fundam with fundamental period n, we have to jump to the other set. And stay there for almost all time, and then go back to n zero, and then we are uh, we are sure that no less uh, no less uh, period is uh, possible because it it um, it started in n zero, and with no shorter time it it comes back to n zero. And if 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 it was in a one, there there can't be any repetition of uh, so to say of smaller periods because otherwise you could not escape again to n0 right at the end right yes all right right so that means that in so in in your statement this n is really can be understood as the fundamental n so the the, the minimal n yes a slightly yeah, more uh, a slightly more interesting case was the second one let me jump there because here we have um here we have um, a chain which, ha which has um, um, which has a third iterate here, and um, basically we don't know what happens there. So uh, the fact that we prove it for n uh, greater or equal to five is essential, because uh, we couldn't do the same as here, for instance, for uh, for four periodic. Uh, Orbit because if we even write something like that, n zero jumps to n one and jumps to n zero with the third iteration, okay. This also produces a four periodic orbit, but we cannot exclude um, the case when it's also two periodic because we don't yeah, know what yeah. is happening here. Yeah. Yeah, that's it what I it mean, can yeah. be too periodic. So, so in fact, uh, this chain, uh, this is important that uh, that the iterate, the, the the third iterate is so small that it's uh, that it's at most a half, not in the case five, but six above. It's uh, it's less than a half of the uh, of the period that we are uh, interested in. Yes. Um, right. For five, it is also uh, it is also excluded because uh, three does not divide five. Yes, but 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 for four we have some problem. Okay, so so um, we can do similar things, but but we have to be uh, be careful uh, with such uh, big jumps. 
because we don't know essentially what is happening there. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Piotr. Yeah, so how big were the computations? <laughs> how big, uh, you mean the time? Yes. Is the time the, the longest uh, the longest case didn't take more than ten or fifteen seconds, so it's a quite quick. I was dividing the sets uh, at most in in some hundreds of pieces, so, so it's it's not very large, in fact. So the whole thing will be like two minutes or something, right? At the end, uh, maybe even less. Yes. So I, I ask a question. Of course. Um, in, in your bifurcation diagram, you're basically showing that the bifurcations are very similar to the bifurcations that are observed in one dimensional maps. And I, I don't understand all the details, but essentially you're, you're essentially showing the same results pertain for, that pertain for one dimensional maps. In the delay differential equation I did with Mike Mackey, uh, we were observing the similar bifurcations that you see in the one dimensional maps, the period doubling, even a region with period three. I wonder if your techniques could apply to time delay differential equations. Oh my, I hope so, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not very, very familiar with delay differential equations, I'm afraid. Maybe Piotr knows something about this. Yeah, so, again, yeah. The, yeah, yeah, answer is on the theoretical level, in, in terms of do we have good theorems, etc., the answer is yes. But then we are, then we have to compute those Poincaré maps, okay? And then it's kind of, you know, Robert Selina had like two weeks ago or something talk about more or less that, okay? Our goal is to do something like this, let's say for Mackey glass equation, okay? But the, so the issue is not with the theorems, but really getting the rigorous numerics, which here was kind of easy, it took several seconds, okay? And in this other case, it's much more difficult, okay? So the answer is we're working on that, okay? Oh, <laughs> okay. We, on, we cannot say that we are close, okay? So. Okay. Thank you. I have one question, uh, Anna. Thanks for oh, the great talk also. Um, so how is the period three situation different to when you have uh, symbolic dynamics and then you prove this sort of square of covering relations? Uh, well, we don't have a, a, full, a full topological uh, horseshoe here. Yes, hmm. the only lacking thing is, of course, uh, the covering between N0 and N0. Yes, so, uh, sorry, just go back. Yes, the thing that uh, you were talking about is uh, uh, the situation when N0 also covers N0, right? Yes. The symbolic, the full symbolic dynamics, yes, we cannot uh, we cannot obtain it here. This is something that is sometimes called a pre-horseshoe or something. If we had a full symbolic dynamics, then we have everything. We have any period and even better, we have some periods that behave in a pattern that we uh, that we describe by zeros and ones and so forth. So yes, 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 yes. This so, is a simple so, so I just wanted to see how it is qualitatively different, but I, yes, I, you, you explained it to me. So, so, so. Okay. so great. So, so it's it's something weaker, but still kind of chaotic. Let's say kind of chaotic. Mm. Mm, may I have a comment on that? Yes, probably better than mine. So here, here you have um, uh, covering relations between two sets, and this produces a transition matrix which has uh, three ones and one zero. So mm -hmm. in fact, in this case, you can actually compute the number of different uh, periodic orbits, well, the, at least the bound from, from, from below, of different periodic orbits of a given period, and you can prove that it, it grow, uh, grows exponentially with n. 
So you, you can you can extend these results not just by showing that there is one orbit for each period, but but actually uh, provide a much much better bounds for the number of, of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, this can be easily calculated because uh, because if you have a transition matrix, then the I, as far as I remember, uh, the number of periodic orbits is uh, is the trace of the uh, of the nth power of the transition matrix. So this this it gives you it gives you a lower bound on the number of periodic orbits. With the covering relations, you, you don't get the upper bound, but but the lower bound is good enough, I think. Mm -hmm. So this would be my comment. Okay. Okay, Jonathan, go ahead. So uh, first, uh, nice talk. I, I like it very much. Uh, so uh, in this work, you produce a, a one-dimensional invariant manifold, yeah? No. No. No, no, no. We do not prove it at all. We just ask what if it exists, even oh. we are not interested whether it exists or not. Okay, so <laughs> I guess... It's just a heuresis or something like that. Okay, so in, in the pictures, it, it looks like it's bordered by uh, if if it exists. It looks like in the in your pictures, at least, it looks like it's bordered. Sorry, by sorry, sorry. That, uh, that periodic was, orbits was meant only as a, uh, as an illustration or something like that. How okay, we... so then a revised question: If you wanted to prove the existence, <laughs> yes, a uh, one-dimensional invariant manifold, uh, do you well, think... maybe if we if we had this, we could uh, set another techniques. Um, there are some techniques that prove uh, the existence of uh, infinitely many periodic orbits if we know how large is the perturbation and so forth. But, but this no. one is 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 quick. <laughs> I don't know, but here is no way that it's one dimensional manifold. Okay, this is like no, no it map, isn't. But but if it is like Fenon map more or less, you know the structure. We we don't resolve the structure in. Uh, three direction, but it's like you have this uh, rectangle, let's say, it's stretched and the band is put inside, okay? This is some kind of counter set. Mm -hmm. So at, 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 the, at this parameter, orbit. is the periodic orbit, is the, the five or the three periodic orbit, is that attracting or is it unstable? It is attracting, yes, but uh, in uh, in between there is some invariant set, but it is it, it is surely not one dimensional, mm -hmm. but but some I think a fract uh, structure or something. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Any uh, additional questions? Yeah, I have one. Am I, may I, or is someone else? I don't. Michael, go ahead, and then jump leap <laughs> after that. Okay. So uh, my question is a little bit an, an outlook to possible future developments. So um, these uh, these covering relations, as far as I uh, understand them, could also be uh, um, formulated at least in case of a more complicated dynamical system, where, for example, the right hand side is a is a partial differential operator. Is an elliptic Ooh. operator, say, okay. right? So, uh, is it true that 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 we can formulate these covering relations also in infinite dimension? Because then we would have infinite dimensional spaces. And uh, if 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 so, then um, would it be true to say if we are able to compute the Poincaré map uh, with whatever uh, um, computer-assisted option, then we could prove. Um, um, periodic orbits or, or n periodic orbits also for such more general systems? Well, um, I, I'm i not sure that uh, the theorem on a fixed point uh, is still true in oh, this, no, no, uh, no, no, in this version. Oh, sorry, sorry. I mean, like okay. several weeks ago or months ago, Daniel Dimchai gave a talk on this here doing this for Kuramoto Shibashinsky, okay? Yeah. So what you need is compactness, either of the map yeah. or on, of the sets or both, okay? And for Kuramoto Shibashinsky, it was for really for both. So you need some compactness for 
theorems like about covering relations should be true. Okay, without compactness is, I mean, you will need some conditions that was something like this. This is like, like Schauder theorem, okay? Yeah, all right. right. So of, of, of course, uh, uh, would you see a chance to, to prove that uh, so one set covers the other in an infinite dimensional space? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I said Daniel Wilcza gave a talk here about oh, that, that, symbolic okay. dynamics. Yeah. Okuramoto so it was. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. I don't know, 30 or 50 covering relations, giving symbolic dynamics, mm -hmm. infinite number of periodic orbits, etc. That kind of stuff. Yeah, all right. Right. So there are so there are theorems. Jean Philippe. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anna, for the for the nice talk. Um, so let's say you chose Rosser's system to, to apply this and it's, it's, yeah, it's quite, quite nice what you have achieved. And uh, I remember seeing at some point that in the Lorentz equation, there is this kind of uh, also, it looks like there is a one dimensional map, which is kind of uh, not like a tent map, but it, it, it looks mm -hmm. a little bit with a singularity. So would, would you be say, or, or did you investigate some similar behavior in Lorentz? And if so, then, or if not, then would, would it be possible to apply such te similar technique? Not yet, but uh, but we are pretty uh, pretty sure that uh, if you have an uh, attracting periodic orbit, uh, and also which is also an attractor in a sense of the whole set, then we can uh, also construct some uh, some similar H sets in general. We are working on that, in fact, but um, but. Um, um, well, um, you were saying about the, the this classical uh, uh, Lorentz system. I, I don't remember at which parameter value it was, but I remember seeing like a conjecture that there was this one D map that would kind of uh, lead to chaos via some sort of Sharkovsky type theorem. Oh, um, okay. But I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not sure. I, I, I was more asking if you kind of try to find a similar kind of uh, geometry in Lor in Lawrence. I can. It it, it sounds interesting. <laughs> okay. Jean Philippe, uh, uh, can I ask a question? Because I just put it on the chat. So uh, I mean, do you mean the geometrical Lawrence attractor or the, the of the one which uh, uh, Warwick Tucker was uh, touching? I, I I would have to look. I remember seeing a. a in a book somewhere, like uh, there was a one D map that looked present at yeah, some but parameter because, value. Because you see, I, I can see the answer to your question at, at several level, at least. I mean, if you talk about the classical geometric Lorentz attractor, the situation is very different than the one uh, we have here, as explained. Piotr, it's absolutely impossible in our case to have an invariant foliation here or in, uh, to reduce to one dimensional map. No way, Jose. Otherwise, I mean, we have a bunch of contradiction. I mean, we, 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 uh, I mean, essentially, as it was said, we are close to the NO attractor, and the NO attractor is highly non hyperbolic, so you would not have any reduction. In the Lorentz case, at least the geometrical Lorentz attractor, there is some one dimensional uh, 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 structure which is respected, but unfortunately, we have a lot of discontinuity, so this is also another thing. Yeah. Now, what I, what I do not know is the bridge between the geometric Lorentz attractor, shame on me, shame on me. Uh, I do not know this bridge between the geometric Lorentz attractor and what did Warwick Tucker to to mm -hmm. to say, oh, okay, you know what, the Lorentz attractor admits this ge geometrical Lorentz attractor, and he showed that using uh, computer assisted proof that it was actually a quite, as you know, guys more than I, a uh, rev revolutionary uh, uh, result. Mm -hmm. but I don't know if it helps. Yeah, so I guess I, 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 yeah. So maybe there is a sweet spot in between discontinuity and uh, yeah, I. I I, I did not. Uh, it was more my, my quick answer, and, and uh, I'm sure Piotr and um, uh, um, uh, will certainly uh, uh, agree with me. I mean, the situation is very different than the present case. I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, I I agree. I mean, this is in continuity. Makes I mean, this is no, no longer Sharkovsky type thing. Okay, but mm -hmm. if you will be just looking for periodic orbits then whatever you get more or less for this Lorentz system, for geometric Lorentz, you will, get, you will get it with covariance also. So in that sense, but here, 
when you have Sarkovsky, then it's more or less tells you what is the low, this lowest, what is the type of coverings for this first orbit in the coverings, and then you more or less know how to get everything right. And not such theorem, I mean, I mean so some different theorem might be for this map with singularities, okay? So in terms of technique, yes, but otherwise, I mean, there every, a lot depends on how high, how far goes this, this singularity, etc. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it looks pretty singular. But, may, uh, okay. may I have a comment on that? Sure. So obviously, uh, you can apply um, covering relations to prove the existence of periodic orbits for the Lorentz system, and this, this has been done. Uh, the main difference um, uh, uh, between the Lorentz system with the classical parameter values and the Ressler system is that the, for the Lorentz system, there is a robust chaotic attractor. So there are no periodic windows inside. So close to classical values, you are not able to find a stable periodic orbit, because otherwise you wouldn't be able to prove the existence of a chaotic attractor. So from this point of view, you cannot, uh, you cannot expect uh, something similar. But obviously, you can, you can use covering relations to prove the existence of periodic orbits. So this would be my comment. Yes, but I mean, having just here attracting orbit, it just helps, OK? But if this will be different characters, then we will move other ways, more or less, OK? If we know the character of the whether attracting or repelling, helps both for we don't know then the construction is harder and you may lose this lowest orbit more or less okay but the kind of general method is i mean the same okay if the map is close to one dimensional model okay then you build relations for one dimensional model with some margin and then you have it for perturbation now the question is whether the size of this perturbation is not too large, okay. Then you well, I kind of not agree with, with the statement that if you have a stable periodic orbit, then it is easier because, because uh, you can easily un uh, locate unstable periodic orbits within the attractor. So once yeah, you locate yeah. a period three orbit, you can use it uh, to construct those covering sets as well. It doesn't have to be stable. Yes, yeah, so this is what I said a moment ago, but then you look at the bifurcation diagram and you see more or less those attracting orbit first, okay? And from that you guess, oh, I have all orbits, okay, okay? Oh, I, I might be missing that, that one, okay? This was the kind of our point of view. Not that we kind of claim that you cannot do it differently, okay? Okay. Any, any other questions? No, okay. Well, Anna, thank you very much for your talk. You, uh, it was a great talk. And also, uh, it's clear that it's much better to have a shorter talk. And then we have a fantastic discussion afterwards and people who run over, right? So that was, uh, thank you also for that, uh, Anna. And uh, thank you. Thank see you, you all um, next week. Thank you. See you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Bye. Thank, thank you. you, Anna.